Hi guys and welcome back to the Bearham Engines channel. So recently, as you all might know, we've been doing a lot of Cosworth engines and we've done a few videos or on every one of our videos, we're sort of updating you on how we're going with these engines. Um, but I have noticed from reading the comments, a lot of you guys not only would like to know the processes in building one of these engines, but the, the cost. How much does one of these engines cost to produce like this? So when we're building a Cosworth, and it's not just the Cosworths, it's a lot of the motorsport engines that we do. First of all, there's two choices building them to stock, and when I say stock, I mean building them back to original as Ford intended the Cosworth to be, internally and externally. And then you've got the motorsport option, or what we call the motorsport option, and that is the option where the parts fitted and the things that you do are to create an end product or a power that you are going for. So if we start, first of all, with a standard build engine, the way we normally work is there's three stages of working out the pricing on, on an engine. You've got the parts, first of all. Secondly, you've got the labor. And thirdly, you've got the machining processes. So if first of all, we start off with the parts, and for this, I'm gonna need my trusty calculator. So, on an engine, Cosworth or, or any other, if we start from the top to the bottom, so rocker cover to the sump, tall engine, everything you'd need really to build an engine. I'm gonna leave out the turbocharger and the, the inlet manifold, and we're just gonna to stick to a basic engine and what that would cost. Um, so starting from the top, you're gonna to need a set of hydraulic lifters, a hundred pounds. You're going to need a WRC Victor Rhines head gasket because that's what we put on all of these, standard or not, a hundred pounds. Full gasket set for this, so top and bottom gasket set including all your seals um, and gaskets needed, about 200 pounds. You've got pistons. Now, whether we use the original Marla pistons and put our own pockets in, which we do on every set anyway, whether it's standard or not, or we use a set of Wozner pistons, they're about 450 pounds. Then you've got your small end bushes. So the small end bushes are the small bush, uh, bronze bush that goes in the top of the comrod, what the piston pin goes through. They're about 25 pounds a set. Then you've got your crank bearings. We normally go for king race bearings now, and they will be for a set of main, big ends and thrusts, about 130 pounds. Then you've got your oil pump. If we go for a worst case scenario, like on, um, not on the small turbo Escort Cosworths, you're talking about 200 pounds for a good oil pump now. Then you've got your cam belt kit. A good cam belt kit is gonna be the cam belt and tensioner, and that's gonna come out about 65 pounds. So for a standard build, on average, that is all the parts you're gonna need, and that's coming out at about 1,270 pounds. So next is your labor. So labor would be your stripping, building, your soda blasting, your painting, and building up the engine bar machining processes. So we normally estimate on an engine like this, it's gonna be anywhere from about 30 hours to 50 hours labor. But from our experience, usually you're not far out on about 30 hours, one of these. Um, and 30 hours at 50 pounds an hour, which we are mind, is about 1,500 pounds. Then you've got your machining processes. So the machining processes are obviously any process that is machining or a process that we would do a set price for. So things like balancing um, and things like that. So if we start from the top on machining processes, we have got your cylinder head. Now to overhaul a 16 valve cylinder head these days from us, 
which would include soda blast in the head, painting it, cutting the valves and the seats to standard spec with our three-face valve seat cutter, and refacing the cylinder head is £165. Then you have got your reface of the block, that is £50. Then you've got your reboring of the block, and we always rebore it no matter what. We do not do deglazing of bores anymore. We will do if the customer asks us and they want to build the engine, but we do not recommend it and certainly wouldn't do it. So that's £25 a bore, and on a four-cylinder, that's £100. Then you've got the regrind of the crankshaft. Now, if we assume that all the journals, uh, mains and big ends, need to be reground, that is £135. Then you have got your sizing of the com rods. So that would be shot blasting the com rods, checking the sizing and sizing them to suit. And when I say sizing, that means making sure that the big end housing measures what it should do once torqued up before the bearings are in. So that, the shot blasting the rods and the balancing of the con rods end to end is 15 pounds a rod. So that's 60 pounds. Then you have got your refacing and blasting of the flywheel. That would be £60. Then you have got your balancing of the crank assembly. So that would mean balancing, dynamically balancing on our machine, the crankshaft end to end. So front end, then back end, then the front pulley, then the flywheel, then the clutch cover. So that would be all in balance. And that is £125. So far, we've got machining and balancing. We've got labor, which would basically, you would end up with the engine built like this, blasted, painted, and everything else. And then you've got your parts, which would include your crank bearings, your small end bearings, full gasket set, competition head gasket, all the relevant nuts and bolts. And with the parts, we normally include the plating. Now that would mean any original nuts and bolts that we want to keep and send away to get plated, which is usually about £150. So that's what it costs to do a standard motor. Now, if we go motorsport, so motorsport could include, on a Cosworth, putting ductile line liners in, 10 stud in the, uh, the block, 10 long studs, different camshafts, head ports, and that's about it really, because we always build our bottom ends to a motorsport spec. It doesn't matter really whether you're running 600 horsepower or whether you're running standard engine, we build the bottom end to the same spec. The reason for that is parts are pretty much the same price. Um, we always put pockets in the pistons in case people just want to run a, a camshaft, a bigger camshaft later on. But not just that, because we're taking some off the cylinder head and we're taking some off the block, it's just really, if you put the pockets in, it just lowers the compression slightly as well. Um, motorsport crank bearings are cheaper than original uh, genuine bearings, so why not? And as I've said to you before, we always balance our bottom ends completely on any engine, whether it's an Austin Mini or a Cosworth it will be balanced. If we work out on top what it would cost you to build this thing um, to motorsport spec, now the only things that are gonna vary are the camshafts that we use. On this working out, we're gonna assume that we're changing both camshafts. Your head port sizes slightly. Those things there really are the only things that we would change to build a big power engine. So if we work those out on top, we've got 10 long studs. Now for 10 long studs, it's £200 for the machining and it's about £400 for the studs. So that's £600. For fitting ductile iron liners, it's £100 per liner. So that's £400 minus the rebore that we wouldn't have to do because that includes a rebore. So if we take off £100 for original rebore, all of a sudden it's not too bad. Head porting, about a thousand pounds, say, on a worst case. Then camshafts, 
It's about £185 per camshaft, depending on what we go for. That's what it costs to have a potentially 600 horsepower engine. And then obviously you've got your manifolds and your, your turbos and what have you. But yeah, hope that helps guys. Hope it's quite informative, gives you a better idea of what's involved and, um, and the sort of prices involved on that. Obviously, don't hold me to that, it does vary. The 30 to 50 hours we say on the labour really does depend on what it needs. Obviously, if we have to start reconditioning the inlet and the exhaust manifold and fitting the turbo and all that, obviously that would be on top of your 30 hours. It's things like that really that can add up to 50. And obviously some engines that we get in do look like they've been living in a garden for 30 years. So obviously the cleaning side of it really can soak up the time. Hope that helps guys. Hope that gives you a, a better idea of, of how much it costs to build one of these things. Thanks ever so much for watching. Comment down below, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in another one. Cheers guys.